This is my song-by-song -song breakdown of the 2011 They Might Be Giants album, Join Us. For general description and overall review of the album, check out my other video about that. But briefly, Join Us followed two kids, or family albums, in a row. And so it was a return to what the band variously called adult, grown-up, or rock music. So, there are 18 songs on Join Us, and the first is called Can't Keep Johnny Down. It's another John Linnell masterpiece, sprinkled with sparkling keyboard notes that really bring it to life. Man, John Flansburgh described it well. A very bitchy lyric with an incredibly sunny arrangement. That bitchy lyric is about a tough guy, a dude who feels threatened and hostile about everything. He imagines everyone is against him and so he lashes out and stays defiant, at least in his mind. He sees his town as full of um, as, as a town. A town. Huh, weird. Uh, you know, a town of these. Linnell's lyrical bluntness was echoed in an interview in which he called the narrator, quote, a complete and utter And I know that They Might Be Giants hate being called a joke band. And of course, they're not. They're a real creative rock band. But when I listen to, say, the Rolling Stones, I don't laugh out loud. I do occasionally when I listen to TMBG. And Can't Keep Johnny Down is one song that's guilty of this. Some dude hitting golf balls on the moon, bathroom in his pants, and he thinks he's better than me. I love how the narrator reduces the entire history of NASA and space exploration into some self-serving personal affront. If only Donovan could have been this succinct and graceful. Yeah, you heard me. There were several fan videos made for Can't Keep Johnny Down because the band held an online contest. John Hodgman, of all people, chose the winner, and it's great. There was an official video, too, and before watching it, I read that it starred the actor Rip Torn. I confess that I got a little bit confused and I was expecting this guy, who turns out to be Rip Taylor. The video with Mr. Torn is a live-action tale of a gritty, bare-knuckled fight in a dilapidated old building full of tough guys. The band wanted you to know that the kid's stuff was over. Oh, and John Linnell was pleased that the narrator shares a name with him and Flansburg. The next song is You Probably Get That A Lot, another Linnell song. This time the sound is tougher. The verses with their stark, pounding, simultaneous guitar and drum hits remind me of London Calling by The Clash. You probably get that a lot. The lyrics are apparently about a guy going up to a pretty girl to talk with her. But he's awkward and shy, and all he can talk about is how she must get approached all the time and how she can probably anticipate everything he might say, even lip-syncing along because she's heard it all before. But he can't stop praising her beauty and specialness, most notably imagining her as being above the other so-called cephalophores of the world. Like the song Contra Coup on the Else, there are words on Join Us that make you reach for a dictionary. A cephalophore, in case you didn't know, is a figure who's carrying his own head around, and it comes from early Christian art. Maybe the meta point of the song is that there is no way any girl would ever be expecting an awkward admirer to start invoking cephalophores. There was a video for You Probably Get That A Lot, a black and white clip featuring the band playing in suits. Linnell lip syncs along, except for the part of the lyrics that actually mention lip syncing. But of course. Next is Old Pine Box, a Flansburg tune. It's about a guy whom the narrator calls Old Pine Box, and according to Flans in an interview, it's about a burnout. The song is built on simple acoustic guitar chords. That and the lilting, repetitive melody make it sound like an old folk song to me. The lyrics are a series of images about the guy in question, alternating between descriptions like head full of rocks and skull full of bats, and anecdotal snippets from a misspent life like you tried punching a cop and left your car in a field, and your mom thinks you're out of your mind. Thanks to the tangy, sweet vocal melodies and the effusiveness, Old Pine Box is a lot of fun to sing along to and is one that tends to get stuck in my head. The town of Canajahari in New York State is the subject of the next song. Canajahari is a small town, and both Johns have summer homes there. The lyrics of Canajahari are about the narrator sensing or having seen evidence of a past world in the underbrush, a fossil, 
a mud skipper evolving a flipper for walking on land, and a dubious friend who doesn't quite believe him give the song both its sense of change and decay and also its tension. Musically, the song has a very dramatic, soaring melody, especially in the verses. A series of fast electronic blips give the music a sort of aggressive industrial underpinning. This song was originally written, by the way, for the else. Into the whimsical we go with the next song, Cloisonne. Cloisonne is a type of pottery dating back thousands of years involving powders that become bright colors in a kiln. And what is it with TMBG and obscure words that start with C? Contracu, craniosophic, cephalophore, canajahari, cloisonne. The music on cloisonne is subtle and more like a presentation than a song. You want to snap your fingers to the cool jazzy beat, sort of like Lie Still Little Bottle from the Lincoln album. Lie still, little bottle, shake my shaky hand. Calling law enforcement business, mind your business. Flansburg sings a simple and repetitive vocal line full of bizarre lyrical tangents. The narrator can't believe how cool he is, but soon he's arguing with a raindrop, whose shaky falsetto voice Flansburg also does. Tell him the story, raindrop. Tell him the story. And then realizing he doesn't even know what younger people are talking about. This takes the form of his repeated question, What's a slee stack? What's a slee stack? Flansburg said this was a real anecdote from his life when his wife brought up slee stacks and he didn't know what one was. I confess, I didn't either. Turns out it's a type of creature from a mid-70s fantasy TV kids show called Land of the Lost. Flansburg said he's one year too old to know about slee stacks, and I'm a bit too young, but the point is that the narrator has always been self-impressed but is starting to realize that his time in the spotlight may be quickly passing. The video for Cloisonne, again, features the band in black and white, maybe a little blue, wearing suits in the studio. I really love the next song, Let Your Hair Hang Down. It was a grower. And it's an unusually straightforward John Linnell song, and the lyrics tell someone to relax, stop worrying over every detail, and just enjoy themselves. You don't always know how something will turn out, but that's no reason to not try. I like it musically. There's a great effect on the guitar. The chords are simple, just D, E, A, D, which spells dead, actually, now that I think of it, but... Let's ignore that for now. So, very easy to play along to, but if I play a chord, I hit each string at slightly different times, not all together, like, so it's like, do, 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 so, so when you hear that strum, that's how you usually experience rock and pop music. It sounds like what they did on Let Your Hair Hang Down is they recorded the guitarist playing a D, and then an E, and then an A, etc., etc., the whole song like that, and then edited out the actual strumming part, so it's just the part where it rings out. Something like this. I'm going to play this song and the chords like that, and then edit the video, see if I can emulate the song. So. They might be giants were probably more in tune than me, but something like that. That's what I think happened. Celebration was another grower song for me. On its face, it's just a traditional uplifting pop song about celebrating, like the Cool and the Gang song of the same name. To me, it sounds like it's about a band playing live and the wild scenes that sometimes happen during a good rock show. There's also a suggestion that this is a band who hasn't played live for a while. It's hard not to see something autobiographical about They Might Be Giants in this song, obviously. 
Best of all, the lyrics are full of references to various pop culture figures, specifically the mysterious graffiti artist Banksy, the mask-wearing anonymous movement, and the 16th century Dutch painter Hieronymus Bosch, famous for his explorations of the light and dark corners of the human psyche. And of course, the wild scenes of his infamously weird Garden of Earthly Delights painting. Is this analogous to a DMBG club show? In a way, it could be, I suppose. One final thing about celebration. During the recording of Join Us, Phil Collins announced his retirement. TMBG drummer Marty Beller, a big Phil Collins fan, added the famous drum pattern from In the Air Tonight. To celebration. One of the tougher songs to understand for me is In Fact. Psychological problems are front and center on this Flansburg tune with the recurring lines, I'm a mess and I ain't right. Narrator babbles discursively and even evokes the image of a chess piece, which longtime TMBG fans will surely recognize as a nod to the song Chess Piece Face on the first album. Although the narrator is a mess, he seems to be building a following who become a mob marching with pitchforks and torches. Whatever the details and the reason behind all this, something unsettling is happening here. There is a video for In Fact, made up of footage from a surreal Dadaist film from 1926 done by Marcel Duchamp. But all of that is nothing compared with the next song, When Will You Die? I can't think of anything as hateful in the entire catalog of this band. It's gleeful in its hate, brutal in its absolute wish that, as the title says, the object of the narrator's ire will just hurry up and die already. If this is the other side of Can't Keep Johnny Down, then all I have to say is, poor Johnny. This song isn't just wishing someone ill, it's explicitly and incessantly wishing them dead followed by detailed descriptions of the massive celebrations that will follow their demise. For example, people will be buying tickets and jumping up and down on the grave. It goes on and on and on like this. Of course, being a John Linnell song, it doesn't actually sound hateful. I'm so tired of your lies and the evil things you're doing behind my back are the cries that you have... It's cheerful and melodic pop, punctuated by very bright, strident horns and rapidly strummed, trebly guitar figures. And it has some more lyrics that really made me laugh out loud when I first heard this song. They break the fourth wall and name check the five band members, Dan Miller, Danny Weinkoff, Marty Beller, and the two Johns. This is Dan, and that's Dan, and there's Marty on the drums, you can be the band, and I'm John, and he is also John, and all of us are wandering when you're gonna die. It's as if to up the ante even more, Linnell is making sure the listener knows this is real, about someone real, in the real world, that he would like to die. The truth, though, is that Linnell has never said who it's about, and it may not actually be about anyone. As he said, the power of the song lies in the fact that the listener doesn't know who it's about. A deliriously catchy meta-experiment on musical psychology, maybe. Interestingly, When Will You Die was recorded at a slower pace and then sped up to give the instrumentation a uh, kind of a higher, more joyful, brighter feel. And then Linnell sang his vocal normally on top of the sped up version. The video for When Will You Die features footage of some guys making a full-size model of the monster hearse from the cover of Join Us. This. That. They make a real cardboard model of it, wheel it around the street, and then take it to the dump and have it crushed. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Join us in the grave. And that's the end of side one of the vinyl. Side two opens with Protagonist, a complicated Flansburg song that tells the story from two different perspectives at the same time. It's one of several songs on Join Us about the creative process itself and the people whose lives revolve around art and creative industries. In this case, the main lyrics are about a scriptwriter and or actor who is struggling with some kind of project or projects, hoping for success and also bitterly recalling how his woman left him for another guy. All of this stress goes into a script, lines from which are intertwined with the singer's inner monologue in this song. They're also sung by Flansburg, but in a much different voice, which sets them apart. They're also the crossed out ones in the lyrics, so you can 
be sure what's what. The scenes in the script are set up in terse phrases, and the plot involves a man and a woman conspiring to commit some crime. At the end, the narrator's part in a movie ends up being cut, and yet again he has failed. And he blames himself, another casualty of Hollywood, and art versus commerce. Judy is your Vietnam is the noisiest song on Join Us. This Flansburg tune rocks. Even if it's less than two minutes long, it's about the mischievous and unreliable Judy, a scenester who used to work in media in the 90s. She's reckless and untrustworthy, but has captivated someone. The narrator of the song is criticizing that victim of Judy's charms. The drumming on Judy is your Vietnam is especially wild, and John Flansburg said it reminded him of the Who's Keith Moon. I could see that. Another thing I really like about this song is that Viet and Nam are written separately, which is not how it's usually rendered in English, but which is certainly valid and actually closer to how it's written in actual Vietnamese. A little aside for geography nerds. The next song is an honest-to-goodness collaboration between the two Johns, the first of three in a row on the album. Never Knew Love features a gentle melodic chorus by Linnell with simple poetry about how he never knew love could be like this. I never knew love could be like this. I never knew love could be like this. Linnell was unhappy with his original verses, so he asked Flansburg to write some. Flans's lyrics are more tentative, reflecting on how new love often fails. It reminds me a lot of two Beatles songs, We Can Work It Out and Getting Better. On the former, Paul McCartney wrote the positive, we can work it out, part, and John Lennon wrote the more minor key, life is very short, section. On getting better, Paul sings, it's getting better all the time, and John adds, can't get no worse. In this analogy, Linnell is the optimistic Paul, and Flansburg is the cynical Lennon. It gives Never Knew Love a good balance between light and dark, and between John and John. It's hard to say, but The Lady and the Tiger might be the most fun to listen to song on Join Us. Its vocals, like Never Knew Love, alternate between Flansburg and Linnell. The lyrics are based on a famous short story written by one Frank Stockton in 1882 called The Tiger or The Lady. In the tale, an enraged king finds out that a commoner is dating his daughter, the princess, and sentences him to the kingdom's usual punishment. In an arena, he can choose one of two doors. Behind one door is a hungry tiger, behind the other is a beautiful girl. He will either be instantly eaten by the tiger or there will be a wedding right there in the arena. The king's daughter, though, finds out which door is which, and also who the girl is, who turns out to be someone that the princess hates because she's been seen talking and flirting with the man. The princess secretly indicates to the man, choose the door on the right, and he does. But then the story doesn't actually say what happened, what's behind that door. The point is that the reader has to decide what the princess chose, to have her lover killed by a tiger or to watch him marry this other hated girl. For they might be giants, the lady and the tiger is a conversation between the tiger and the girl behind the door, waiting for one of the doors to be opened. She thinks the whole thing is stupid and wants to bust out, using her laser vision from her eyes. The tiger tells her that that would just start a fire and kill them both, so she backs off. And that's about it. There's even less of an ending in the song than in the original story. Flansburg sings the lady's lines and Linnell sings the tiger's lines. But all of this is beside the point in this song. It's the awesome music that makes this song so much fun. led by a slow and funky, ultra-cool saxophone riff. It's impossible to hear this song and not get up and strut and dance around the room. Listen. This is the sort of song that makes me nervous, like humanity dodged a bullet. If They Might Be Giants hadn't written this song for Join Us, it wouldn't exist. And who wants to live in a world where this song doesn't exist? Spoiler alert is the third song in a row on Join Us with shared vocals between the two Johns. Linnell wrote two sets of lyrics and they are sung in two different melodies. But, and here's the thing, they're sung at the exact same time. Flansburg is in one speaker, Linnell is in the other. Here comes this truck is driving All I need is an ending. But this truck has 
a mind of its own. Linnell's lyrics are in the first person and are about an author who is trying to type the end of his book while he's driving to a disastrous ending. Flansburg's lyrics are also about driving, but are more impressionistic and otherworldly. Built around the great phrase, this truck is driving out of my mind, this narrator says he's glad that the truck can drive itself because his legs are too short to reach the pedals anyway. So he lets go of control, as a driver and as well as mentally, and lets the truck drive itself. At just the same time that Linnell's narrator starts yelling, what the hell, what the hell, about some, quote, trouble up ahead. It reminds me of the end of the tour, the last song on John Henry, another John Linnell song using a metaphor, in that case a touring band, for a deadly bus crash. The video for Spoiler Alert is mostly two hands mouthing the words to the two sides of this song. The faces of the three backing band members are shown, so I like to think that the two hands are actually those of the two Johns. The next song is the secret weapon of Joinus. It's called Dog Walker, and I cannot get enough of it. It's short and features jittery, processed electric guitar figures alongside an amazing John Flansburg vocal. He's a good singer and all, but what is so compelling about Dog Walker is that his voice is pitch shifted upward, so he sounds sort of like he's inhaled helium. It makes the short economical lines of the song, which he performs with a weird sort of swagger, that much more incongruous and dissonant. The opening lines, show down at the battery, are what gets most stuck in my head from this entire album. The lyrics seem to be about someone walking their dog in Manhattan's Battery Park, even though kids always tease and throw snowballs. The dog walker tries to use their own psychology to feel better, reminding themselves that the kids are only as scary as you feel they are, and there's no real danger. The best part is the ending phrase, which is a perceptive and totally unique take on the dog and dog owner relationship. I am a dog walker, but someday I'll be a dog. Linnell's sci-fi time travel conundrum follows in the song 2082. It's comprised of computery synthesizer blips sounding like some experimental project from the early 80s. Draw the curtain, look, you're only sleeping. Or is this only what the other you is dreaming? Either way. Unusually, the song is in the second person, thus the listener is causing some kind of cosmic trouble across the space-time continuum. Now we're all implicated in Linnell's psychological contests. The plot of the song, for there does seem to be one, involves you traveling to the year 2082 and seeing yourself still alive, but very, very old. You quickly check a couple of years much farther in the future, 2240 and 3415, and you're still alive even then. Confused and alarmed, you murder your future self and then go back to the present day. But in the song's final lines, you reflect on the curious look that your future self gave you, and you wonder what it meant. And then Linnell points out, you'll find out for yourself when the tables are turned, and it all happens to you again as an older person in 2082. The next song has a good pun on the band's name. It's called Three Might Be Duende. Duende is a Spanish word meaning a sort of ecstatic immersion in art. Flansburg, when asked, usually describes it as the spirit of art. Incidentally, one depiction of a duende was done by Francisco Goya in 1799, whose Se Aprovechan inspired part of the cover of The Else. Musically, Three Might Be Duende is the most show tune piece on Join Us. With the stately cadence of a march and Flansburg's comical low register vocals, it tells the story of four figures. Maybe. These are the densest lyrics on the whole album, and their meaning is far beyond me. From what I can tell, three of the figures comprise the Duende force, while the fourth can never be part of the trio. And speaking of the else, while on that album the song The Mesopotamians gave us four wild, un-rock and roll names, Sargon, Hammurabi, Ashurbanipal, and Gilgamesh, here Flansburg ups the ante. The four figures in Three Might Be Duende are called the Monochrome Martinet, Necropolis Blown Apart, Apocryphal Espadrille, and Dystopio Smashed to Bits. Your move, Linnell. The final song on Join Us is in fact a John Linnell one, and it may be my favorite if I have such a thing. And it's a perfect album closer type of song. It's called You Don't Like Me, and it's unique and, despite itself, even catchy. It's kind of a companion piece to Linnell's earlier You Probably Get That A Lot in that the narrator likes somebody, but he believes that someone doesn't like him, and he's getting very, very stressed about it. 
In this version, though, he believes, or he says he believes, that he can read the person's mind, which is how he knows they don't like him. I know what you're thinking. I can read your mind. In your thoughts, it's obvious. You don't like me. From what I like about this song musically is two things. The guitar chords are strummed once each and allowed to just ring out. It doesn't come pummel your ears, it just lies back and makes you go to it. You know, like an uninterested person's thoughts being pulled from across a room without his knowledge. The other thing I can't get enough of is the two sections where the narrator lists all the things he says the object of his obsession likes. The music is shaped to fit the varying numbers of syllables in the list. It's fascinating, but it must have been torture for the band to nail down. Now, in my video about The Else, I mentioned how Flansburg once described TMBG as a band that, quote, leans heavily on nouns. Well, the two lists of liked stuff and You Don't Like Me are truly inspired, head-spinningly random nouns. I would like to quote them in full. <clears throat> you like cigarettes, swimming laps, potato chips, battleship, cats, and court TV. You like shadow puppets, Woody Harrelson, reading in the bath, Nirvana, and baseball caps. You like Bollywood, snow machines, daguerreotypes, beauty contests, and cruise control. You like booster rockets, cutting with a fork, Terminator 2, The Morning, and William Tell. Wow, the cluttered mind of the insane, laid out in all the sympathetic beauty that John Linnell could muster. Oh. So those are the wild and wacky songs on Join Us. There's a lot of ground covered on this album, and it's really amazing. Thanks for watching. The next album will be Nanobots. I'm off to go absorb it now, so see you next time.